Hurricanes, killers, destroyers. Nothing now known to man can stop them. But the damage they cause can be minimized, and the number of lives they take can be lessened by timely warnings and proper preventive action. This is the story of a hurricane and how some people reacted to it. It starts in the tropical Atlantic, where a freighter is churning her way to New York from South America. On her bridge, the deck officer is completing a weather entry in the ship's log. Light sea, wind northeast, force four. Barometer 29.80, falling slowly. Just an entry in a ship's log. Normally, it wouldn't be too important. But this is the tropical Atlantic, spawning ground of the hurricane. And this weather observation has the earmarks of a hurricane being born. And so a message goes out to the Weather Bureau. A message that may later affect the lives of millions of people along the east coast of the United States. People like Judge Scott, Florida salesman. Jim Gibson, South Carolina executive. Bill Bishop and Sid Schwartz, vacationing office workers. Sergeant Cantrell, State Highway Patrol. And Jane Graham, Maryland housewife. All of them going about their daily business. All of them unaware at the moment of a short radio message that sets in motion a prearranged plan designed to protect their property and save their lives. Coordinator of this plan is the United States Weather Bureau. At this very moment, the ship's weather message is being received at Weather Bureau offices along the entire eastern seaboard. Just a hint of trouble here, but enough for experienced meteorologists to request reconnaissance flights into the area. And the military's famed hurricane hunters respond. Both the Navy and the Air Force maintain specially equipped squadrons, ready to take off at a moment's notice to investigate a potential hurricane. They don't always find a severe storm, but this time it looks like something really big may be brewing. But how big? There's one way to find out. So these courageous flyers take their planes into the very teeth of the gale. First, the rain squalls. Then, as the plane penetrates, the winds increase. They lash at the plane with an incredible fury. Men and machine fight for survival as the winds threaten to hurl them into the raging sea below. At frequent intervals, weather data is radioed back to the hurricane forecast centers. Then, as if by magic, the storm appears to give up the struggle. This is the center, or eye, of the storm. Here, the winds are almost calm, the air hot and humid. And here, the aerologists continue their work. Wind direction and speed, pressure, and many other conditions are reported. So that the waiting public will know at all times where the storm is and how it will affect them. Judge, the paper says there's a hurricane on the way. We'd better check the storm shutters and make sure everything's okay. Dane, help your father get the lawn furniture in. I'm going in and... Wait a minute, Kathy. Let me see that article. Relax, honey. We don't have to do anything yet. This story says the storm is still east of Puerto Rico. We can keep the radio tuned in and listen to the Weather Bureau advisories. Then if there's any chance of the storm hitting this area, we'll be warned. Yes, Mrs. Scott, relax, because this hurricane is being carefully watched. While it may eventually come your way, for the moment, you are not in danger. Hurricanes are erratic and usually slow-moving. Ordinarily, they move forward at 15 miles per hour or less. So normally, there's time for ample warning. But more important, most hurricanes never touch the United States. Many stay out at sea, or veer into Central America, or Mexico. But whichever way they go, and this one is headed for the United States, you and everyone else in its path will be informed. Keep alert and follow the latest Weather Bureau bulletins.
Now station WMPS brings you five minutes of the latest news. A hurricane watch has just been issued by the Weather Bureau for the Georgia and Carolina coasts. Hurricane Betty is located 300 miles east of Daytona Beach, Florida, moving northwest at 15 miles per hour. This does not mean that there is immediate danger. However, all small boat operators are advised to stay in port, or if at sea, to return home. We Let's repeat, go. We can eat on the no way in. Danger. Mr. Gibson, I just got the latest Weather Bureau advisory on Hurricane Betty over the radio. The storm is about 300 miles east of Daytona Beach, Florida. There's no danger to Florida, but the Weather Bureau has issued a hurricane watch for the Georgia and Carolina coasts. Thank you, Mrs. Wilson. Would you call the maintenance foreman and have him put his crew on standby orders? In the meantime, I'll make preliminary plans for shutting down the plant. And oh yes, keep the radio turned on for the next advisory. We don't want to stop production unnecessarily. Ackman, I've just had a call from the Weather Bureau and the hurricane watch has been issued for this area. I want you to dispatch two cars to the beach and notify everyone there. Also, contact Corporal Weeks and have him set up the hurricane detail and to watch this thing very closely. We want to be able to move fast when we get the warning. Yes, sir. Hurricane watch for the Georgia and Carolina coasts. This notice tells everyone in that area to be on their guard. Yet conditions so far do not justify hurricane warnings. Once the watch is issued, residents in low-lying coastal areas should make plans, if necessary, to move to high ground, away from the danger of high tides. Public utilities mobilize standby crews and ready their equipment for instant action. All this time, upper air soundings are taken ahead of the storm. At coastal stations nearer the danger, the normal tempo of operation is increased. Weather conditions from sea level up to 60,000 feet are studied. Here too, radar, born and bred for war, but now developed to help save lives, probes the heavens for signs of the storm. And there it is, still off the coast, but moving steadily forward. This storm is becoming more of a threat each hour. Back at the Hurricane Forecast Center, the tracking continues. Here rests the responsibility for evaluation of reports from other stations, from ships at sea, from hurricane reconnaissance flights, and, when necessary, for issuance of warnings. And it is here, as at all weather stations in the area, that a special emergency warning center is set up. To this center come Red Cross and civil defense workers, as well as representatives of press, radio, and television. Erratically, the storm moves closer, almost as if searching for the right spot to move inland. Everyone watches and waits. Ladies and gentlemen, it now appears quite certain that Hurricane Betty will cross the coast tomorrow morning between Wilmington, North Carolina and Cape Hatteras. The storm at the present time is about 150 miles south of Wilmington and is expected to move northward in the next 24 hours to the Chesapeake Bay area. The hurricane watch on the Georgia and South Carolina coast has been canceled. We are now issuing hurricane warnings for the North Carolina, Virginia and Maryland coast. This means that all precautions should be taken immediately against the full effects of this storm. This is it. Hurricane Watch has been changed to Hurricane Warning. Now the public must act to protect property and save lives. Junior's getting dangerous. He's getting tougher and bolder every day. Now he's tough gangster. Heading for the big time. Raging along. Waging... We interrupt this program for a bulletin on Hurricane Betty. The hurricane is now about 150 miles south of Wilmington, North Carolina, and moving in a northerly direction about 12 miles an hour. People in eastern North Carolina and the coastal areas of Virginia and Maryland are advised to take all possible precautions. Please listen carefully. Q.
Keep your television or radio set on at all times and listen for official Weather Bureau bulletins. If power fails, use a portable or car radio. Do not listen to rumors. If your house is out of danger from high tides or floods and is well built, remain there. But check on everything that might blow away or tear loose. Trash cans, garden tools, signs, porch furniture, toys and other objects become weapons of destruction in hurricane winds. Put your auto in a safe place and make sure you have plenty of gasoline. Your gas station may be unable to operate pumps if electric power fails. If you are in exposed areas, sterilize the bathtub, bottles, jugs, and cooking utensils and fill them with water. City water service may be interrupted. Check your food supply and make sure you have things that require little preparation and no refrigeration. Remember, electric power may be off for some time, and if it is, keep your refrigerators and freezers closed to prevent food spoilage. Make sure your emergency lights and cooking facilities are in proper working order. Get away from low-lying beaches or other locations that may be swept by tides or flooded by swollen streams. Remember, most hurricane casualties are caused by drowning. And be sure that shutters are stoutly constructed and securely fastened whether you leave or not. If your passage to high ground is likely to be flooded, leave early. Don't risk the chance of being marooned. Tie up boats before the winds and tides increase. And do not venture out to check moorings during the storm. You can do little against the force of a hurricane. Stay inside. Now everything has been done that can be done. Now the fury strikes. storm is followed by clearing weather. This one is no exception. Everywhere the awesome power of the hurricane is evident. Shattered, sunken, and beached boats. Crushed, torn, and battered buildings. but living people. Living because no matter where they were, or no matter how great the danger, they knew at all times where the hurricane was and what they had to do. Yes, living because dedicated people worked round the clock to maintain an ever watchful hurricane warning service.